I'm gonna show you real quick how to tell the difference between the boys and the girls of this species. So, and those are actually egg parasites, guys. He has been parasitized by a tachinid fly. So another little guy, probably a male. Here, here's one right here, guys. Hey guys, David Fine here from Keys Moths. I've got another video for you on the buck moth. And we're in the middle of this rearing project, uh, working with Jim Tuttle and looking to see if we can determine what the South Florida population of Hemaluca Maya, the, the buck moth, what's going on with them because it's the population in Boca Raton, Yamato scrub uh, natural area is really far south from its uh, normal habitat. We've got a couple of videos that we've posted already and now we're a little bit further along in the rearing process and we wanna show you kind of the caterpillars are now starting to turn into their pupil form and we wanna show you a few interesting things about the Hemaluca Maya life cycle at this stage and how to raise them. So uh, guys, if you like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we've got total, totally cool science nerd, moth butterfly nerd videos coming your way. And, but guys, it really is cool. And uh, I have a feeling you're gonna enjoy some of the stuff that we have lined up for you on Keys Moth. So check this video out on the later stages of Hemaluca Maya, the buck moths, life cycle. Check it out. Okay guys, so we are gonna jump right into it. We have our caterpillars are finishing up their life cycle. They're finishing up eating. I've got some containers here with caterpillars. And as you saw last week, we went into these containers here and we actually were putting the caterpillars that were making their, their chrysalis or their pupa inside of here. Uh, and we are now are gonna show you what the buck moth pupa looks like. And we're gonna show you how to tell the difference between boys and girls and males and females. You can actually sex the pupa. Um, and so we're gonna show you how to do that. So check this out. All right, guys, so here's what we do. In this container right here, guys, I don't know if you remember in the last video, we were putting all of our pre-pupal caterpillars in these containers. I've got like four of these little Tupperwares that that I put dirt on the bottom and some leaf litter because buck moths will go and make their pupa in the leaf litter on the, in, on the bottom on the ground. So they don't make their chrysalis like a butterfly hanging from the tree. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to make it as natural as possible. And so what we wanted to do is make some dirt, some leaves and uh, make it as natural for them as possible. So when they're ready to pupate, they can go down here and make their pupa. Now, if you've raised moths before, you probably are already seeing some of the pupa as the caterpillars have made their little uh, cocoon housings and have made their chrysalis. And so, guys, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna show you how easy it is to find these guys in here. Here's one right here, guys. There's a buck moth pupa right here. Check it out. Okay. That, guys, it might look unappealing to you but this right here is a buck moth pupa and let me try and get it in the light a little bit there so you can see a better image of it but guys that is a buck moth pupa uh, and I'm going to show you some really good images of it here coming up you can see right here is the head and all of you can see all the leg segments and the wing segments or the wing chambers the antenna chamber and all the abdominal segments here. And then over here is the butt end. So, uh, but guys, I'm gonna show you, after we dig a few of these out, I'm gonna show you how to tell the difference between the boys and the girls. So, all right, so what I'm doing, I'm taking this other container here, guys, and I am actually collecting the pupa from these containers and I'm putting them in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this guy in there and I'm gonna put these side by side so you can kind of see them. I'd like to get these guys out of this dirt and into 
this container so we can sex all the pupa. So literally guys, as I move the leaf litter away, you can already start seeing the pupa there. So there's some right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick some of these guys up. Right, I've got three right there. Those are three Hemaluca pupa. I'm just gonna put them right there in our little container. So I'm gonna just kind of sift around, see what else I can find in here. Sometimes they just, they'll pupate right in the leaves. So you kind of gotta be careful. Here's another one, there's a little guy. That's a little dude right there. It's a little pupa, but still healthy. Okay, let's see. How many more can we find in here, guys? There's another one. Oh, there's a skin. So there's the skin of the buck moth caterpillar that they shed as they make their chrysalis. Now, I don't know if these spines still sting, but the caterpillar spines, when they touch your skin, they really, it hurts. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you what kind of camouflage job they've got going here. So here is another pupa. Actually, guys, here's another pupa that came in I don't know where this came in, but this was a little moth right here. And that has emerged already. So somewhere, somehow or another, another little moth made it in, probably on the leaf litter. But let's go ahead and take this guy and we're gonna put him in here. Now, this caterpillar here, I put him in quite a while ago. Now, what's going on with him, guys? So this caterpillar right here is actually not doing too good because he has been parasitized by a tachinid fly. So now I'm gonna pull him out and I'm gonna put him here. So now, whenever you have a butterfly or moth species that emerges all at once and there's high levels, you know, large numbers of individuals, you're gonna have some form of parasite that attacks them. So see how this segment near the back here, guys, is dark? Well, that was a place where a tachinid fly, a parasitic fly, which the eggs were laid inside of this caterpillar, probably at an earlier stage, uh, will finally emerge. Now, if you see right here, you can see kind of where the, the tachinid fly larvae come out. Unfortunately, guys, a lot of our um, buck moth caterpillars suffered from these parasites. And I actually have a whole container full of parasitic um, infected uh, caterpillars. And as of now, we have 26, this will be 27, uh, caterpillars that have been um, parasitized by our flies. And so they didn't get parasitized when, ooh, that really smells. All right, they didn't get parasitized in captivity. Guys, the parasites, the, the flies come and lay their eggs on the caterpillars uh, in the earlier instars. And what happens is the larvae of the fly will burrow into the caterpillar once they hatch from their eggs. And they'll eat the fatty content of the fat of the caterpillar. And they'll wait all the way until the caterpillar is almost ready to make its pupa. And then the fly larvae will pop out. Now, so I'm actually collecting the, the tachinid fly pupa as they pop out and as I'm finding them and I'm saving them and putting them in this little cup. And I'm gonna send them away to a laboratory for identification because um, parasites, actually the information that we get from studying the parasites of animals uh, actually is very valuable. So we're gonna find out what species of tachinid flies these are. And as you can see, some of them are already emerging from their chrysalis but we're gonna go ahead and send this entire cup up to the university for them to study and include in their paper. So, so far out of about 100 caterpillars, guys, we've got about 27, this says 26, but we just put another one in there, 27 that have been parasitized by tachinid flies. That's almost a quarter of all the caterpillars that we found have uh, parasites in them. So not a fun fact, but it's a truth, it's a reality, and the br brutality of nature is, is pretty, pretty crazy. So 
Let's see what other, other caterpillars and chrysalis we can find in here, guys. All right, here's another one here. This guy didn't, seems like it didn't shed its skin very well. All right, it's, it's good though. Yeah, so it's still got the larval skin hanging off of it. Anybody else in here? Yep, there's one. Okay, so another little guy, probably a male. Males and females, guys, I'm gonna show you how to tell them apart in a minute, but the females are considerably larger than the males. And so, there's another one. All right, so I'm not seeing a whole lot more in here. I've got a few more of these Tupperware containers to go through, so I'll check them out, but I don't see any more in this particular container. So this container will now be used to house more caterpillars. Okay guys, so I was telling you a little bit about our tachinid fly problem with some of the caterpillars, uh, but what I also wanted to show you, I wanted to show you just how many parasites these moths have to deal with in their life cycle. I found three egg clusters while I was out there uh, walking around in the woods in Yamato scrub. And they, they, they lay their eggs on the stems of these little plants here of the oak trees. Uh, smaller stems and you can see how the female just wraps the eggs all the way around the stem. Now this middle cluster, the eggs have actually hatched and the, the caterpillars crawled out or for the most part, there's a couple dead eggs in there, but for the most part, the eggs hatched and they were fine. The other two clusters, if you look closely, you'll see that each egg has a little tiny hole in it. And those are actually egg parasites, guys. These eggs were heavily, heavily parasitized by egg parasite, parasitic wasps. And um, it's really traumatic to see how many of these things get, die in early ages because of parasites. So even though the caterpillars have the big, uh, impressive spines, guys, it's still, they still get eaten. There's still things that are gonna eat a caterpillar and eat the species, even though they have uh, poisonous spines. So look at all the holes, guys. All of those eggs had wasps living in them and have, eat, have been eaten. So they've all perished by the way of the parasitic wasp. Very, very interesting. All right, guys. I'm gonna show you real quick how to tell the difference between the boys and the girls of this species. So, on the back of the pupa, there are abdominal segments, and there's one, two, three, and four. And now, on the fourth abdominal segment, on the females, you can see that that segment is divided. And you can see that little div division right there, and that is the, the evidence of the female sexual uh, organs, the ovipositor. Okay, guys, here's a male pupa. And you can see on the fourth abdominal segment down here, one, two, three, four, that there is no abdominal division. So this would be a male pupa. Uh, also, uh, that's one way to tell them apart. Also, the antenna chamber, which is up here by the head, the, the males, obviously, of Saturnids always have those big feathery antennae. Uh, it's not as pronounced in the uh, buck moths, but they still are larger and the males have much fuzzier antenna. So the, the antenna chamber is actually larger. So this is a male. I'll show you the antenna chambers of the female, which are actually a lot smaller. So um, again, it's not as pronounced in this species as it is in um, other Saturnids, but you can see that the female antenna chamber is smaller on the female than it is on the male. So, but definitely I wouldn't go by that if you're trying to sex the pupa. I would definitely go by this abdominal segment division down here on the bottom on the female pupa. So that's, guys, that's how you tell the difference between the boys and the girls. Now, I was actually raising at the same time as finding these guys. I was actually raising a different Saturnid species, the Iomoth, whoops. These are actually Iomoth pupa, guys. As you can see, the Iomoth and the Buckmoth pupa look very similar. The Iomoth might be a little, a little larger, a little more plump, plump than the Buckmoth, but guys, again, very, very similar. 
And so um, if you're just looking at these guys, most people would not be able to tell them apart. But I'm gonna be able to sex this pupa as well. The Iomoth pupa, let me show you. Same thing, guys. We're gonna sex this pupa as well. The Iomoth pupa right at the base on the fourth segment, it is divided. So this is a female pupa and I only have two. So let me see if, what this one is. This one is also a female. So I got two female Io pupa here, guys. And they could emerge anytime because they've been in there uh, in the pupa for a good month. So guys, that's that. Now, guys, we are going to put our buck moths back into our little container here. And I've still got a bunch more over there to go sift through and find. So guys, we are going to now sex all these pupa. I'm gonna go through each one and divide the boys from the girls. And we're gonna make sure we send the university some and we're gonna keep some for our experiment later. Um, you know, it's the end of April now and we they won't start emerging until at least November. So we've got a while before these guys start coming back to us. Uh, are coming out of their our pupa, but we can't wait to do some pheromone experiments with these virgin females when they start emerging. So uh, that's about all the time we got here for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, guys, everything from uh, tachinid fly parasites to uh, we have egg parasites. We, we showed you how to tell the difference between a boy and a girl uh, moth pupa on some moth uh, moths like the, the buck moth pupa, we can show you that difference. And now we've showed you that. And guys, now it's the waiting game. Uh, so we're gonna come back to you probably in the fall when these guys start to emerge and show you the next phase of the project. So guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, because when you do that, you'll get notified every time we make a cool video on the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Uh, and don't forget to give me a like. Also, comment down below if you have any interesting um, facts about buck moths or other Saturnid moths, or let me know what type of butterfly or moth in Florida you would like me to go and look for and give you a video on. So guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to check out our website. It's keysmoths.com. We have got a 15 year project down the Florida Keys that we've been working on. and. 700 butterfly and moth species photographed for you there and all the information about what their life looks like in the Florida Keys. So guys, till next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.